Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going over the recent Data for Progress poll released uh, out of the state of Pennsylvania for the November 2022 Senate race. And I kind of want to just go over it. And this is an interesting poll because Data for Progress is a Democratic biased polling firm. And it's also interesting because they endorsed John Fetterman, one of the candidates in this race. So this, this poll is certainly not objective. But I think the poll is still interesting nonetheless. And if you know me in some past videos, I've said that even biased polls to one side or the other still could have some interesting data or truths about it. However, I like this poll because it was taken between May uh, 7th and May 14th. So it's about May 26th today, I believe, is when I'm recording it. So it certainly is relatively recent, which is what I like about it. It only conducts 651 voters in Pennsylvania, 651 likely voters. So it's not the biggest poll. I prefer for polls to have as close to 1,000 people as possible because the more people you poll, the more likely it's going to be accurate. Not to mention, the election is still about a year or two years away. So a lot of these early polls aren't always super reliable. But it's still just nice to have this information to go off of. So... For an early poll, 651 likely voters through a web panel for about a year and a half out. It's not bad. It's not a bad poll example. If anything, it's actually pretty good. Uh, this has been weighted to be representative of likely voters by age, gender, education, race, and voting history. Uh, the survey is conducted in English, and the margin of error is plus or minus 4%. So that's the thing. The smaller the voting sample, the bigger the margin of error. 651 people, plus or minus 4 points. If you have a polling sample of like 1,000 or 2,000 people, the margin of error would probably be about two or three. So, but anyway, whatever. First question they ask is, in November of 2022, there will be a general election for the U.S. Senate. How likely are you to vote? Um, definitely will vote at 64%. So that's pretty big, actually. It's not massive turnout, but pretty big. That's among uh, top line. You have 71% Democrats, 50% Independents, 64 for Republicans, so Democrats so far are maxing out uh, Republicans in this. It makes sense because this is a Democratic skewed poll, so naturally they're asking more Democrats, so there would be a higher Democratic enthusiasm. And then uh, probably will vote has uh, 16, 18, and 19. So there's still some pretty decent um, enthusiasm with 272 Democrats. 256 Republicans, 123 Independents. There's pretty decent, especially for this early on, with the election still a year and a half away, there's still some pretty decent, um, what's it called, pretty decent enthusiasm in this race. If the general election for the U.S. Senate was being held tomorrow and these were the candidates, who would you vote for? Democrat John Fetterman, who, as I mentioned, uh, Data for Progress already endorsed him, and Republican Jeff Bardos. So, the top line is that John Fetterman gets 48%, Bardos gets 38%. That's like the, after all the polling, what happens. So Democrats are 87 for Fetterman, 3 for Bardos. Third party, 46 for Fetterman, 27 for Bardos. So uh, John Fetterman, while not getting a majority, still gets a vast uh, win with independent or third party voters. And then Republicans, Jeff Bardos gets 80 and John Fetterman gets seven. Now, I'm not going to spend too, too much time on this because this isn't really the one I'm focusing on. I'm focusing more on number three. The U.S. Senate for election is held tomorrow. The candidates are John Fetterman and Sean Parnell. This is what I think the election in Pennsylvania very well could be. Sean Parnell, I know, certainly has most of the attention on the Republican side. He seems to be the most biggest well-named with name recognition in this race for the Republicans. And John Fetterman, who is the current lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania, he has the most recognition of the Democratic side. So this is the poll that I want to really focus in on. For Democrat, or it's 48 to 40, so John Fetterman does start out with a lead. Again, plus or minus of 4%. So margin of error of 4% is crucial. And a Democratic skewed poll who already endorsed John Fetterman with a plus or minus of 4 this 48 to 40 lead, it's not going to be, I always say, if when you see a lead of 48 to 40 on election night in a close race, Fetterman will not win 48 to 40 unless there's a third party candidate that's like, like taking up historically 
super unlikely number, so it will not be 48 to 40. But it does show that John Fetterman's support is more locked in and solid already. And my expectation for that is it's because more people statewide know who John Fetterman is. He's been the lieutenant governor for the last few years. The people of the state know who he is. And when the early polls come out, it's, it's more of a whose name do you recognize more? It's like when you see, when you see a, po- a poll from two or three years before an election, like for instance the presidential election, all the early primary polls, they're saying whose name do you recognize? And John Fetterman is clearly more well-known through the state. He's the current lieutenant governor. He's been mayor for a long time. Sean Parnell, while he is um, relatively well-known, he also ran for Congress last year. So some people might know him statewide, but it's clear that John Fetterman is more well-known in the state. And I think this 48 to 40 number certainly reflects that. However, what's most interesting to me is this, is Fetterman gets 88% of Democrats to 4% voting for Parnell, Whereas Republicans are 84 for Parnell and 3 for Fetterman. So this is about equal in that Republicans are squarely behind Parnell, Democrats are squarely behind Fetterman, and there's very few people actually breaking off and voting for the opposing party's candidate. Which you see in a lot of tight, contested, close races. When one party is firmly behind one candidate with not many defectors to the other party, and vice versa, it is the makings of a very close and very competitive race. Now, next, what comes, which comes next, which I think is very, very important for elections especially, is the gender gap. John Fetterman is leading Sean Parnell 47 to 41, which to me says there's a lot of undecided vote there, and that's actually not the biggest gap. The main issue is that Fetterman leads Parnell 49-38 to males, which this is, I don't know if this would hold up on election day, but the way that things have been trending is Republicans have been doing worse among female voters and Republicans have been doing slightly better among male voters. But the problem has been that, like in 2020, for instance, President Trump did much worse with female voters than expected and male voters were about the same, if not maybe a little less. So if John Fetterman's winning the male vote and the female vote, I don't really see a path where Sean Parnell could win. It's likely Sean Parnell would either have to split both votes or at least win the male vote and narrowly lose the female vote. If Sean Parnell keeps that six-point margin, it's 47-41, so Fetterman wins the female vote by six points. Say it's 53-47. That's still a pretty big female vote win for Fetterman, but if Parnell could then win the male vote, like 60-40, that would be enough to counterbalance it, based on proportions and how Pennsylvania voted in 2020 and 2016. However, I think it's Fetterman winning both of them is a pretty big uh, inclination here. Under 45, Fetterman wins big among voters under 45. This is to be expected. Uh, Democrats typically perform well with voters 45 or less. In most cases, 35 or less as well. Uh, for 45 and up, Parnell has a one-point advantage over Fetterman, as expected. Uh, no college degree. This was President Trump's main support in 2016. I know he campaigned on this a lot. 42-42 tie. And for college experience, Fetterman leads big with 56-37, as to be expected. And then it also does Connor Lamb. And I'm going to focus in on Connor Lamb for Sean Parnell, because this is the really interesting part. This poll, as I mentioned, is Democratic skewed. And they did endor- endorse John Fetterman. But if it's also Connor Lamb for Sean Parnell, they actually have Sean Parnell starting out with a lead. Which is interesting, because I don't... because Sean Parnell and Connor Lamb were, I believe it's District 14, were the matchup last year. So people in the district certainly know who they are. But statewide, you would think Connor Lamb would have more name recognition, and maybe he does. But Connor Lamb gets 84% of Democratic votes. Sean Parnell gets 7. And then Connor Lamb gets 5 of Republicans, and Sean Parnell gets 86. So it's relatively equal. But this is where things get interesting here. Sean Parnell is winning the women's vote over Connor Lamb. That is not to be expected, at least in my book. I don't. I honestly don't know why this is, but if Sean Parnell is winning the women's vote against Connor Lamb, then yeah, he, Connor Lamb should be worried if he's the nominee, if this is the case. The male vote is 46-44, so it's about an even split, but if, they're, if Sean Parnell is winning the women's vote, then that's very, very interesting. Connor Lamb is winning under 45, 47-34. 45 and over, Sean Parnell is a, pretty, a much bigger lead than over John Fetterman of 50 to 49. 
No college agreed. Punter now is winning 48-37. Call is 51-37. So my main takeaways from this poll, that's the end of the thing, by the way. Uh, my main takeaways from this are that this is a Democratic skewed poll. They already endorsed John Fetterman, so you know where they lie. But there's some interesting numbers in here that shows definitely the makings of a very close competitive race and definitely one to keep an eye on that I know a lot of people, including myself, have already said that if the election were held today, I think the Democrats would probably be favored to win it. But the numbers show this is going to be a very close, contentious race that could really go either way. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, tap the bell icon next to the subscribe button to go get notified when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.